Hey, it's Daryl Sims, and today we're going to be talking about how you can turn any song into a beautiful instrumental piece in the style of Matthias Asato. The song that you heard at the beginning is called On Bended Knee by Boys to Men, and Matthias obviously took the song and turned it into a beautiful instrumental piece. And as I mentioned, you can do this with any song, but Matthias particularly likes to do it with pop songs or R&B songs because they have a very distinct, catchy melody, as well as usually quite a simple chord progression behind that melody, which makes it a whole lot easier when you're trying to do this kind of thing on the guitar. So what we're going to do today is not only learn this piece, but also try and analyze how it went from boys to men to Matthias Asato. All right, so there are three things that you need to discover before you can turn any piece of music into an instrumental piece. And that is the bass line, the dominant melody, whether that be the lyrics or another instrument, and then the overall feel and vibe of the song. So the most important one of those is definitely the bass line because ultimately the bass line leads any piece of music and defines the chords behind that. So that would be the first thing that I do when trying to do this method. Step number two would be to find that chord progression. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. And to do that effectively, the first thing you want to do is discover whether the chords are simply major or minor. And then if you can hear an obvious extension, then sure, highlight that. But just try and keep it as simple as possible. So here it goes. So there we go, it's a relatively simple progression that starts in the key of E, and then halfway through there's a key change, it changes the key of D, and then finishes on an A, which is a beautiful resolution at the end there. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got three steps to do. We figured out number one and part of number three. We've kind of got the feel of the song now. We've got the chord progression nailed. And the next thing that we need to do is figure out what the melody is. So that would be the lyric line. And then later on in this instance, there's actually an instrument which is more dominant than the lyric line. So let's now try and figure out the dominant melody line. Starting from the beginning, that is the lyric line. And this is what Matthias does. So you can see you've got that E in the bass note, which highlights the first chord, which is an E. And we've just got an octave pattern, which kind of highlights that lyric line before the next line, which is... So if I play that without the bass notes, we have... And then from this chord, we're going to slide down to an A major triad. So from here to there. And then we've obviously got our A note accessible in the root there, which highlights the next chord, which is an A. Followed by an A slash B. So, so far we've got... And this here is just a gap filler. So that just fills in that little gap there where there's no lyrics, just highlighting the chords, which were A and A slash B. And then it repeats for a second time. But to keep it interesting, Matthias kind of changes it very slightly. So listen out for those changes. So already at the beginning, we've got a big downward hit there, which just kind of grabs your attention and keeps your ears aware and awake. After that comes the same lyric line with just a slightly different variation on the end. So again, we get another hit there just to keep your ears interested. Followed by another lyric line. 
So this highlights the E chord that comes next in the song and the lyrics actually fall on that E note as well. So that's quite convenient. So all we gotta do is follow that E. Before moving into the next two chords, which is B minor into E, the lyric line would actually be and we're just gonna play those two chords, B minor and E, on top of that, which sounds like this. Followed by a couple of sixths. So we have two sixths there from the A to the B. And then this note at the bottom there. Having that sixth harmony there just kind of widens the lyric line and the overall sound coming from the instrument. So that's quite a cool technique that Matthias uses a lot. He will double up the lyric line, for example, with thirds or sixths. Those are the sort of the two most common ones that he will use. Sometimes fourths, but yeah, that's maybe something for you to experiment with when you experiment with this yourself. So next up we have. So we go back to a sixth there and then a minor sixth, so these two chords followed by a D7 sus2. At least that's how I would interpret it, you've got a kind of D7. But rather than the third at the bottom there we've got a 2, so it sounds a bit like that. And that's a good checkpoint there before the chord progression slightly changes. Matthias breaks it up with a, another hit and pick slide. And then we have this. So the chords that are highlighted here are G sharp minor, which is the... And then the next chord, which is the C sharp minor, into the last chord, which is... F sharp minor sort of 11. And then the very last phrase that sees that first half off sounds like this. So we're kind of playing over the B here or the A slash B and doing a few more sixth patterns. So we have a major, major, minor, and another major. So that summarizes the first half. I hope you managed to follow along relatively well. I will come back to this later and play it slowly for you to follow along. But for now, I wanna move on to the second half. And this is where the key change falls. And the dominant melody here is not the lyric line. There's actually a sort of piano behind the track. Give it a listen if you're not aware of that. But it's actually a very beautiful piano piece. And we're gonna obviously transcribe that to the guitar now, just like Matthias did. And it sounds like this. So let's break that down. So to start with, we have a D, followed by an E, and then a F sharp minor. It's actually an F sharp minor seven shape there. And then we sort of pull off that bottom half of the F sharp minor seven, and then highlight the C sharp bass note there, which turns it into C sharp minor seven. So we've got, and then we're sliding into a B minor seven. For our last chord, which is an E, and we have some more descending sixths here, so watch carefully. And then we're pretty much going to repeat the same pattern with a slightly different variation. So if you remember, like the first half, it's kind of important to change something, even if it's just little things, just to keep the listener engaged. So check this out, we start off with a harmonic to begin with, rather than... Okay, so we've got, and then, so there's a little hammer on there in the middle. And there we go. So we kind of finish off on a couple more sort of six there. So we have a major six into a minor. 
So that summarizes the tune. Hopefully you can kind of begin to see how we went from the bass line to the chord progression to the melody line, and then sort of piece that all together in the end with the third principle I mentioned at the beginning, which was just trying to sort of master the whole feel of the song. And I'd say it's a pretty laid back R&B song. So that's kind of what we're going for on the guitar, sort of laid back, gentle vibe. Now let me play the whole piece one more time at a slow speed for those of you who are trying to follow along with it. And yeah, let's see how that goes. There we go. With the exception of a couple mistakes, that wasn't bad, but hopefully you can overlook that because the main intention of this lesson was just to kind of show you the approach that Matthias went through to get from the original song to the final piece. So just to summarize, if you remember back to the beginning, there were three key points that you need to remember if you want to develop something into an instrumental piece, and that is number one, to find the bass line of the song and follow that with the overall chord progression, just keeping it simple, maybe with a couple extensions if you really want to or need to. Number two is to find the lyric line, the melody line, or the dominant instrument, whatever the dominant melody is at that point in time throughout the track. And number three is to piece that together into a sort of feel that reflects the original song. And this is something that everybody can do and a lot of people do do. This is just Matthias's touch on this song. And if you were to do this yourself, you would probably have a different touch in the end. So I don't want you to necessarily copy Matthias. I just want you to kind of take inspiration from how he did it and apply that to your own versions. There we go, that is the end of the lesson. I hope you took something away from this video and I hope that you not only learn the piece but you'll also be able to implement this into your own playing and transform your own favorite songs into a beautiful fingerstyle instrumental piece. If you wanna download the tab for this piece then check out my Patreon page which is linked in the description below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.